Everybody, welcome back to Off the Wall. I'm Mike. It's spooky season, and uh, it's the end of October. I'm going to drop some reviews to some of the cool uh, spooky movies I saw this month. Uh, but maybe cool is the wrong word, because right now I'm starting things off with talking about the 2022 version of Hellraiser. This one was directed by uh, David Bruckner, was written by David S. Goyer and uh, Ben Collins, Luke uh, Piotrowski. Forgive me if I'm mispronouncing that. Uh, the movie stars um, uh, Odessa Asian as uh, Riley and Jamie Clayton as uh, the Hell Priest, also known as Pinhead. Uh, this movie was uh, in development for a while. It was talked about for a long time. There was going to be a reboot, um, and then ultimately went to Hulu. Hulu's kind of been stepped in their toe in a little bit of the the horror reboots and 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 sequels and things like that. We saw their version of Prey, which was the new Predator movie that came out earlier this year, which was awesome. But uh, now we're talking about Hellraiser, and, you know, I'm not someone who was a big fan of the originals. You know, it's one of those, the original Hellraiser is already seen as just kind of fine. It's got a very strong cult following, but in the grand scheme of things, like, it's fine. It's not awesome. It's not awful. It's just, it's fine. Whereas the sequels, again, despite the cult following, the sequels are pretty bad. Uh, they're pretty dumb. They're pretty stupid, and and they're they're not really watchable. Uh, this is definitely the best Hellraiser movie since the original. I wouldn't go so far as to say it's a good movie, though. It's definitely of the Hellraiser movies the most entertaining one since the first one. And if that's all you're really looking for in this, then you might have a better time than I did. But as someone who's a little picky to the to the point of maybe being a little bit douchey about horror movies uh this one really didn't do much for me uh the titular uh, uh you know hellraiser cenobites you know we're looking for them they're not really in the movie a whole lot uh they're talked about and they're alluded to but they don't actually get a lot of screen time and most of the screen time they get is actually pretty lackluster uh there's only one maybe two truly like brutal Cenobite moments in this movie, most of their kills and the things they do happen off screen or in one case are done with such God awful CGI that it kind of actually takes you out of the movie a good bit. Uh, the most of the movie is dedicated to this group of young people who are dealing with the curse of the, of the puzzle box and uh, trying to find a way out of this sort of deal with the devil that we have going on. There are several times in this movie that I found myself really kind of rolling my eyes because there were some really curious choices with the script, particularly with our lead character uh, uh, by the name of Riley, who's a recovering drug addict who's, uh, who manages to escape, uh, barely avoids being cut by the puzzle box and is therefore trapped in this kind of endless loop with the Cenobites and, and, you know, the curse that comes with, with solving the puzzle box. And uh, it's just, it's a lot of very strange choices. Uh, a lot of the dialogue is, is very, at the times on the nose and at the times just kind of dumb. Um, there are characters that were introduced to who are then killed uh, minutes later and it carries no emotional weight because we've spent absolutely zero time with this character in this movie and so i i struggled to care about them uh, uh dying by at the hands of the cenobites the movie is telling us that we're supposed to care the the music and the dialogue of the character suggests we should care but we've we've spent exactly zero minutes with this person on screen i have no reason i i had had to actually go back and, and check to see if they had been in the movie before because they had been in 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 the background of one scene. So it, it didn't really make a lot of sense why suddenly they were the big focal point. They're they're kind of the big the biggest kill uh, in, in the movie. They're, they're, this is probably the one that made me kind of I, I get a, a little squeamish. So I had to you know, do, do this a little bit. Um, but it's it's a character that means nothing. So while the kill itself is brutal. You don't really care. Gorn Vizhnik, uh plays a strange role in this movie. We we meet him uh, very early on, and we don't meet him again until much later in the movie. And he plays the role of of Roland Voigt, who's just this kind of uh, a millionaire hedonist who is obsessed with the Cenobites and was trying to find the ultimate uh, uh, pain versus pleasure. 
uh, uh, stimulation through the Cenobites and they they give him his wish and now he's come to regret it because he realizes the cost that came with it and he uh, is trying to once again uh, trigger trigger the appearance of the Cenobites so that he can negotiate a new deal uh, to get out of this curse and and therein kind of lies the rub with the entire plot of this movie because this secondary plot for why everything is happening isn't introduced until well past the halfway point in the movie and it's even established later on that it was all that everything that's happened has transpired by his design and it really doesn't make a lot of sense there's a lot of convenience and a lot of things he couldn't possibly have planned for that transpire in this movie to get us to where we are at the end that it doesn't make a lot of sense. And there's kind of a twist with one of the characters that I won't spoil that gets introduced that when you go back and look at their scenes prior to the, this point in the movie, it makes no sense. There's a betrayal that takes place that again is established like it was like it was planned from the beginning. But if that's the case, then it was a terrible plan because it, it, it simply doesn't make sense. All in all, there's, you know, a movie called Hellraiser, which is a, a, another reboot. This is not a sequel. This is a reboot, uh, a new story. Uh, it's loosely, loosely inspired uh, by the book, The Hellbound Heart. Uh, it has absolutely nothing to do with the story of the book. It has absolutely nothing to do with the story of the original movie. This is an entirely original story that simply features the Cenobites. And I think this is a case where somebody took the idea of the Cenobites and just tried to write a movie around them. And similar to like you see with comic book movies where we say your goal should be to write a good movie and then dust it with comic book sprinkles. I think the makings of a good horror movie are just that. Try to make a good movie. If you want to make a movie that's a reboot or a, a, a based on another property like a book just try writing an original a good original story and then pepper in those characters to see if you can make them fit this just felt like well let's just make a movie with the cenobites in it um and let's not really care too much about what it is they're actually supposed to do they're in the movie and they the design of the cenobites is incredible it's it's amazing makeup and special effects work and they're very creepy looking they don't really do much so it left a lot to be desired. All in all, this is not a movie I can in good faith recommend to anybody watching. If you're a dedicated Hellraiser fan or you just want to watch some pulpy, campy horror, uh, something that's kind of easily digestible, you can give this one a shot if you so desire. But I'm not going to sit here and tell you that you need to go see this and decide for yourself. I think I don't think it's a very good movie at all. I think it's kind of a waste of time and you're, you're better off spending your time watching something pretty much anything else. Uh, this is really just one you can just skip and, and you won't lose any sleep over it. Anyway, that's my review for Hellraiser 2022. Let me know what you guys think down in the comments. Did you enjoy this one? Are you a big Hellraiser fan? I'm curious to hear what you guys have to say. And we'll let you, we'll, yeah, we'll let you can't talk today. And we'll see you guys again next time here on Off the Wall. Bye.